Hi, welcome to another episode of Vivid Aquariums TV. I'm Dave, and today I'm going to talk to you about monitoring and controlling phosphates and nitrates in a reef aquarium. Phosphates and nitrates tend to accumulate or build up over time. They can lead to ugly nuisance algae such as hair algae or bryopsis. It causes corals, especially SPS corals, not to color up fully or open fully. It's very stressful for fish and invertebrates, and it can lead to what I call ugly tank syndrome. So keeping these levels in check is definitely a key to success. Keeping your nitrate levels below 10 to 15 parts per million is essential for a healthy reef aquarium. The best way to do this is through regular water changes, usually 10% every two weeks or 20% once a month. But your nitrate test kit is going to be what tells you when to perform that water change. When you see your levels climb above 10 parts per million, you know it's time to get ready to do that next water change and bring those levels back down into the desired range. Also, I must note that good protein skimming is important to help keep those nitrates low, so make sure to keep your protein skimmer well adjusted. Recently, hobbyists have begun using bio pellets and even dosing vodka to their systems to help control nitrates and phosphates. Bio pellets need to be run in a fluidized reactor such as this, whereas vodka can be dosed either directly to the sump or into a nitrate reactor that runs on vodka. Now, I must recommend that when you're dosing vodka to the system, you want to test regularly in the beginning so you ramp up the dosing very slowly. You need to make sure to keep your DKH lower than you normally would, ideally about 7 to 7.5 DKH. And there's a great article online called, in Reef Keeping Magazine called Vodka Dosing Distilled. So you might check that out online. It's a great article and a must read if you're considering dosing vodka. Phosphate levels in a reef aquarium should be no higher than 0.08 to 0.10 parts per million. Ideally, we like to keep them close to 0, 0.0 parts per million. Now, to test our phosphate levels, we prefer Dana, Hannah's digital phosphate checker. This actually has a sort of electronic eye inside it that will read a color sample of the vial, test value that you put inside it. And this will tell you 0 .00, 0 .01, 0 0.02, and so on, so you get an accurate reading of your phosphate level. This helps to make you, help you get the most out of your media without pushing it too far. Now, there's two main ways I recommend for reducing phosphate in a reef aquarium besides water changes, and that is to run Fosgard or Roafos. Now, Fosgard is best to run in a mesh bag such as this. You want to fill the bag about two thirds of the way full. You want the media loose in there, not too packed. And you rinse this off in the sink and then place it either in the filter sock or in the back of your nanocube, any area where you have good water flow through the media. Now, for larger systems, I recommend something like this, which is a fluidized media reactor. This is an MR1 reactor. These reactors have a power head that pumps water into the top. That water flows down through the reactor in the center and then up through the media, fluidizing the media. Now, anytime you fluidize the media, you have better water contact with the media, and the same amount of media is going to last you longer, saving you money. So, in conclusion, don't let nitrate and phosphate take you down. Instead, keep them in check, because you'll be glad you did. And, uh, you have a lot more fun with that hobby. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a good night.